Hello, welcome back to BioClass Bytes. In this video, we are going to talk about building disaster resilience. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. So what is disaster resilience? So according to United Nations, resilience is um, about anticipating, planning, and reducing uh, disaster risk to effectively protect people and community. Um, so to, to think it simply, um, resilience is the bouncing back, okay, or building back better um, after a disaster hits a community or a family or or a nation, okay? So, bouncing back or springing forward or building back better after a disaster hits. So, this is also used in many disciplines and has been used in disaster studies since 1970s. So, to think, another way to think about resilience is that it is said to be the opposite of vulnerability. Okay? So, if you still remember, we talked about exposure and vulnerability. So, vulnerability is the ability of a system to resist the effects of disaster. So um, high or low vulnerability is also related to that system's resilience. Okay, so if you have low vulnerability, most likely you have high resilience. And if you have um, high vulnerability, most you are very vulnerable, most likely that you have low resilience. Okay, so resilience also emphasizes the importance of not only managing change but also improving the well-being of the citizens so uh, capacity building disaster risk reduction the, those are the policies and disaster risk management those are the implementation are all important in developing and enhancing the resilience of a community or a nation and um, we've already established this that resilience needs to be enhanced at all levels from family to local to community to local government to international level okay so this is very important uh, that's why you know again i've mentioned this before disaster risk management must not must also be um tackled and studies uh studied even at lower levels okay even as early as grade seven i think um so this involves the create uh, prevention of the creation of a new risk reduction of existing risk and strengthening all the facets of that community and most importantly environmental resilience through adoption and implementation of um, risk reduction uh, strategies so again the disaster risk reduction the, those are the policy making and disaster risk management is the implementation of those uh, policies while resilience is the ability to to bounce back after a disaster and must be enhanced at all levels in the previous video in which we talked about disaster risk reduction and disaster risk management we partially mentioned about resilience so again as a review how do we build resilience uh, within a community so we've talked about anticipating risk so that means um, understanding and assessing the intensive and extensive risk of a community preparing to adjust such as using tools to support decision making scientific models um, evacuation plans community as risk assessment uh, share and learn um, what you have um, discovered or what you have come up with to improve people's flexibility in dealing with different challenges. Integrate sectors, uh, promoting greater dialogue and coordination across all stakeholders. Uh, include the most vulnerable in the decision making, whether in, the, in a family, in a community, um, in, a in, in a country or a nation. Um, so you can check this out from Prevention Web. I'll provide the link in the description below. So again, no? Since risk and systems, or that system, a system could refer to a family, a nation, or a community, uh, since risk and systems are dynamic, resilience as well should also be thought of as a process rather than a final out outcome. Resilience, uh, resilience in disasters must be continuously evaluated and improved upon um, as time goes by. So from UN, United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, they say that we need to manage risks, not just disasters. Okay, so again, disasters only result from, um, from natural hazards in which the exposure and vulnerability of the people were not addressed. So we need to manage risk, not just disasters. And disaster risk reduction, so that's the policy making um, 
procedure is part of sustainable development. So it must involve every part of the society, government, and organizations. Um, this includes um, uh, this includes um, people-centered and multi-sectoral approach, building resilience to multiple cascading and interacting uh, to, to multiple cascading and interacting hazards and creating a culture of prevention and resilience. So creating a culture that, pre that prepares for disaster is actually, uh, sh should actually be embedded in all nations, uh, especially here in the Philippines where in we are actually prone to a lot of natural hazards. So again, if DRR is the policy making procedure, the implementation of those policies fall under disaster risk management. And under the implementation, it must involve avoidance of the construction of new risk. So as we move forward, as we as we progress, as we move forward, we should avoid the construction of new risk, address pre-existing risk in a community, and share and spread risk to prevent disaster losses um, by other development outcomes or and creating additional poverty. Okay, so we've all mentioned this. Okay, we have established this in the past that uh, poor poorer segments of the society and poor nations are more prone to. Um, impacts of natural hazards and um, they have lower resilience um, lower resilience but higher exposure and vulnerability to these hazards so how do we do reduce disaster risk so these are four important um, steps okay that, that that should be taken so number one we've all mentioned this prevention so this refers to activities and measures to avoid existing and new disaster risks, okay? So prevention, they say, is often less costly than the disaster relief and response. We've also, we've already established this, that um, a dollar spent on prevention could save you possible four to six dollars in the future should a disaster happens. So example of that would be relocating exposed people, so exposure and vulnerability. So exp re relocating exposed people and assets away from a hazard area. So if you're li near, living near a, a volcano, so moving away from that volcano. If you near, if you live near um, uh, a body of water that's prone to tsunamis or storm surge, so to relocate away from that, so to to um, reduce your exposure to that hazard and to uh, reduce your vulnerability to that hazard falls under prevention. Another thing to consider is transfer. So this refers to the forma, the process of formally shifting the financial consequences of particular risk from one party to another. So the best example for that would be insurance. Um, so. Um, I think it's very important that people look into into availing insurance policies um, for their cars. Okay, I think most of the cars right now um, are required to have uh, car insurance policies and even home pol home insurance policies. So um, even if it even if it's quite expensive at first, in the long run, no, should something happen, uh, at least your house is insured. So our home, my husband and I, we live in a home, and this has been insured. Um, as long as as long as uh, as as soon as we we transfer it here, so that's sometime in two thousand six. So we've been, we've been insuring this home uh, since two thousand six. I, I know that um, not a lot of people uh, think that that's a wise decision because sometimes nothing really happens within a year, but you're but you're shelling out money, you're paying insurance. But what that's what that's what um, this this process is actually. Um, uh, looking into to the transfer of financial consequences. So should anything happen, the house is insured um, in case of uh, natural disasters or, or natural um, events or even man-made events, man-made disasters, the house is insured. We can, we can rebuild our lives um, with the money that we will get from the insurance companies. Next is mitigation. So we've talked about this in the previous series. So that refers to the lessening of the impacts of hazards, lessening uh, or limitation of the adverse effects of hazards and related disasters. So example of that will be constructing flood defenses or planting trees to stabilize slopes, okay, to minimize um, the damages for, from landslides. So this one should also be an important um, 
area okay to look into uh, by local government units or if it is not possible by the community or if it's not even possible by the uh, members of the family in their homes and then finally to reduce risk preparedness so the knowledge and capacity to effectively anticipate respond to and recover from the impacts of natural of hazard events or conditions so this mostly refer to installing early warning systems identifying evacuation routes and preparing emergency supplies so again if you remember we had this back-to-back -back activity the first one would be creating a hazard map from for your home to identify the hazard hazards in your house and then it was followed by um, family evacuation plan so that involves identifying identifying evacuation routes what to do when you all of you are not in the house where where you should meet what to do with family members with special uh, special cases or special needs or with disabilities what to do with your pets who's in charge with this who's in charge with that preparing emergency supplies with your go bags that must contain clothing for at least three days and bodies uh, and uh, water supply with all the medications and everything so these are these are uh, time consuming and costly at first but again what we're doing is to prepare for what could possibly happen in the future so if we have all this if we have prevention if we have insurance or transfer of financial consequences if we have mitigation and preparedness our um, chances of survival and resilience and recovery also increases. Still from United Nations, if those exposed to hazards are unaware of the risk they face, it is difficult to see how or why households, businesses, or governments would invest in reducing their risk levels. So it means that even if... Um, so if those citizens themselves do not know that these are the risks in their environment, um, the government's units and other um, organizations will not be, um, uh, would not invest, okay, or would not take time to help them reduce their levels. Um, however, risk awareness may be, uh, while risk awareness may be a precondition, the importance people attached to managing their risk can only be understood in the context of the full range of social, economic, territorial, and environmental constraints and opportunities they face. So, if the people are the ones who are clamoring for help, or if the citizens are the ones who are saying, these are the risks we face here, this is our vulnerability, this is our exposure, the local government units and other organizations would most likely uh, extend help to them and devise ways in order for them to, to raise their um, resilience, lower their exposure and vulnerability, and ensure that they will have a better recovery should any disaster occurs. Now, um, in terms of global level, we have several um, frameworks for action that are already in place in order in order to to have a united uh, approach on disaster. Okay, uh, so I have I will present two. The first one is the Hyogyo framework of for action that that uh, ran from 2005 to 2015. Then um, later I'll present to you the Sendai framework for action. So this is the first one. You can visit this from United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. So, so um, the Yogyo Framework for, for, uh, for Action uh, was actually presented and studied and talked about um, in Kobe Hyogo, Japan. That's why it's called Hyogo Framework. In Kobe Hyogo, Japan uh, in January 2005. Okay, So the uh, the framework for action 2005 to 2015 mostly focused on building the resilience of nations and communities to disasters. So the, the, this framework for action addressed the following challenges posed by disasters, the Yokohama strategy, what they learned uh, and the gaps identified, objectives, expected outcome and strategic goals. The priorities for action uh, between the, the periods of 2005 to 2015 and implementation and follow-up. You can visit this actual report. I'll provide the link in the description below. So here, so that's the, the International Strategy for Disaster Reduction Yoga Framework um, report. This is actually a PDF file. You can download it. So what is the Hyogyo Framework for Action? It's actually a key instrument for implementing disaster risk reduction adopted by the United Nations. Its overarching goal is to build resilience, again, 
of nations and communities to disasters uh, by achieving substantive um, reduction of disaster loss by 2015. Okay, so the priorities for action in the Hyogyo Framework for Action includes uh, to guide states, organizations, and other actors in, at all levels in designing their approach to disaster risk reduction. Now, um, in this document, the Secretary General of the United Nations during that time, Ban Ki-moon, um, um, states that climate change is expected to cause more severe and more frequent natural disasters okay so we have a moral social and economic obligation to build resilience across all countries by 2015 so implementing the yogi framework for action will help us reach the millennium development goals so to learn more and to 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 find out what happened during the um World Conference on Disaster Reduction in 2005. I recommend that you watch this video entitled Yogyo Framework for Action. I'll provide the link in the description below. So again, the HFA, Yogyo Framework for Action, um, was developed in 2004 following the tsunami which claimed more than 200,000 lives. They, they, um, so this emphasizes the need for a paradigm shift. Again, we've mentioned this um, in the previous videos from disaster response to disaster risk reduction. Because before this time, all the efforts are done uh, after the disaster has occurred already. But now they see the need to prevent it as much as possible. So the HFA was formulated by 2005, adopted by 18, 168. Uh, governments in the World Conference on Disaster Reduction in Kobe, Japan, 2005. It's, it is aimed at building the resilience of nations, uh, reducing vulnerabilities, risk, and exposure to hazards. Then by 2009, the Philippine Senate ratified the ASEAN Agreement on Disaster Management and Emergency Response, which is the ASEAN's affirmation of its commitment to HFA. Okay. So these are the five major um, parts of the program of the HFA. So number one is to make disaster risk reduction a priority. So that was the shift from disaster response to disaster risk reduction. Know the risk and take action by identifying, assessing, and monitor monitoring disaster risk in the country or community. Be prepared and ready to act to strengthen disaster preparedness. Reduce the risk um, uh, the, of underlying risk factors and to, again, very important, build understanding and awareness by using knowledge, innovation, and education to build a culture of safety and resilience at all levels. Now, the Hyogyo framework ended um, in 2015 and it was followed by uh, the next framework, the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, which covers... Um, from 2015 to 2030. Okay, so the Sendai framework is the follow through of the Hyogyo framework. Um, outlines seven clear targets for uh, and four priorities for action to prevent new and reduce existing disaster risks. Okay, so this was adopted at the third UN World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, this time in Sendai, but still in Japan. So the first one is in Yogyo, Kobe, Japan. So here in Sendai, Japan, that's why it's called Sendai Framework in March 2015. So this is the document, the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, and this is one of the photos there. Uh, you can actually download it, I'll download it as a PDF form, PDF file. I'll provide the link in the description below. So these are the seven targets um, to achieve by 2030 under the Sendai framework. So to reduce the following, substantially reduce the following, global disaster mortality. Okay, in the previous video, I've shown you a, a, um, a world map that showed us the, the deaths due to natural disasters okay, per 100,000 ca uh, per capita, for, per 100,000 people. And the goal is to reduce that global disaster mortality, reduce the number of affected people, reduce the economic loss in relation to GDP, and uh, reduce the damage to critical infrastructure and services disruption. So these are the ones that they wish to reduce in all countries participating by 2030. And to increase the following, number of countries with national and um, local 
DRR strategies by 2020 to increase international cooperation for developing countries and to increase availability and access to early warning systems and DRR information. So in the next video, that's our actually our topic, early warning systems. Now to learn more about the Sendai Framework, this is a video from UN, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. I'll provide the link in the description below. And this one is actually a playlist more on um, Sendai Framework. Okay, so you can all watch this video. This video is, um, again, the link to the playlist. You can find it uh, in the link in the description below. Now, these are world maps from our world in data that's related to natural disasters. So these are the score of adoption and implementation of natural strategies in line with Sendai Framework. Okay, so zero to one and one, those with, with um, already in place adaptation and implementation um, rules and strategies. So as you can see in, for, for the Philippines, we do not have data. Um, about our status, but the number, uh, the most um, prominent and most active in terms of this would, of course, be Japan, followed by other countries. Now, in comparison, let's look at the score of adoption of legislative or regulatory provisions for managing disaster risk. So, these are the one who mostly, um, who mostly uh, propose that they have natural national strategies or they have natu national policies for Sendai and these are the ones with legislative or or provisions or laws okay or protocols uh, for managing disaster risk so um let's you can compare you can see the number of people so here one um, up 0 0.8 score to one so one it means that they have adoption of legislative provisions so still japan and the rest of the countries okay however if we check out those with those who have implemented so this is trr disaster risk reduction those with policies now this one is drm the one with um action or the, the ones who implemented those policies so as you can see um there are changes okay there are changes in the um uh, scores of uh, countries okay so this is the proportion of local governments we, to, that adopt and implemented so drm this drm is what we're talking about here of drr strategies in line with national strategies so the only one that, cons that can be seen consistent here are countries such as uh, japan and new mexico okay some parts of i know europe some parts of africa okay now you can read more about uh, these maps from our world in data specifically the interpretation for the maps under natural disasters i'll provide the link in the description below now um, again we've seen over and over that in terms of nat national level local level in terms of policies and implementation J japan has been a consistent um uh, a consistent model for disaster resilience and these videos that i will share with you will explain why so this these are required videos for you to watch okay so again no we've seen national level policies and implementation japan has been consistent and these videos will explain that um the reason for that okay so the first one is this from euronews japan a world leader in disaster prevention linked in the description below Another required video for you to watch, Disaster Resilience Made in Japan, again linked in the description below. And finally, Japan's Underground Temple Protecting Tokyo from Floods. Okay, this one, uh, very important, specifically here in the Philippines, specifically in Metro Manila, in which um, flooding is a major um, hazard, again linked in the description below. So again, these three videos, which is the main topic of this uh, lecture, Disaster Resilience, all, all seen through through the Japan. Please watch uh, all these videos. Okay, see you. Uh, we cannot talk about uh, disaster risk reduction and disaster risk management without uh, going back to climate change. Okay, so I I hope you still remember that playlist on climate change. 
um, it's very important for you to understand that the that climate change is one of the driving forces of natural disasters, okay, specifically in our country, in our Philippines. So this one is the GFTRR programs, Disaster Risk Reduction, Building Resilience and Changing Climate. You can download this report, linked in the description below. Basically, what they're trying to say is that um, uh, that climate change is a clear and present danger, and that every year natural disasters from climate-related hazards cause substantial loss of life, economic damage, and um, problems for economic and social development. Uh, they say that between 1991 and 2005, hydrometeorological hazards um, accounted for more than three quarters of all natural disasters. So all of this floods, storms, and droughts, these climate-related disasters were responsible for the 98% of the cumulative number of people affected by natural disasters. So that's how big um, the risk and the hazards and the impact of climate change um, is in a uh, in global level. So much, so much more here in our country in the Philippines, right? So, um, Ways to address climate change and to build resilience against climate change is not just um, uh, concentrated in Japan. It's actually observed all throughout the world with efforts coming from Middle East and North, Af uh, North Africa, um, in Latin America and Caribbean, in Africa, East Asia and the Pacific, and South Asia, and Europe and Central Asia. So it's actually a global effort to, to increase the country to increase a country's resilience, to lower their exposure and vulnerability, and to better recover from effects of climate change. So, so much more here in the Philippines, in which uh, we are in, in a direct line, okay, in a direct line of um, hazards. So, it's, a ve it's very important for us to take climate change very seriously. So the um so according still no still from Ban Ki Moon, United Nations Secretary General, the more governments, UN agencies, organizations, and business and civil society understand uh, risk and vulnerability, the better equipped we will be to mitigate disasters should they um, uh, strike. So the more we know and the more we understand, the more we prepare for disasters, the more likely that we will we could recover from them. Okay. So now, before we end this video, I recommend that you watch this performance from Beyonce. She sang the song I Was Here uh, at the United Nations World Humanitarian Day um, in 2012. So, while, while the artist was performing, um, you can see images of uh, United Nations volunteers and other um, um, United Nations uh, volunteers, and as, as they help uh, citizens who were um, affected, greatly affected by disasters so if you want you can check this out i'll provide the link in the description below that ends our video i hope you learned something new don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video till next time goodbye